that is the Gold Cup hero. Two of the most admirable chasers you could possibly wish to see. Relentless, remorseless, has pounded caught that star into submission. Hello and welcome to the Race Hour podcast. I'm your host this week. It's Dermot Nolan. I'm joined by Mr. David Weldon. How are you, Dermot? You well? All good. And I'm joined by Paddy Aspel. How are we doing, boys? All good. All good, Paddy. So, of course, this is the Race Hour podcast in association with bookmakers.co.uk. We're here in the towers of bookmakers.co.uk and you are unfortunately stuck with me as your host this week because um, old man Dean Ryan's after pulling his back. So he... Uh, He's at home this week, and unfortunately, we couldn't get him due to some technical issues over the phone. So we've had to leave him go this week. But I am joined by the very able duo of uh, of Dave and Paddy. So, of course, lads, as always with the Race Hour podcast, we'll start with a, um, a review of the week. We'll preview the weekend, and then we'll move on and have a look at the um, at the Cheltenham Festival in full. So, first of all, Dave, Defi Desai was excellent. In the um, at the weekend in the Clarence House chase, there has been a bit of talk that the pace in the race wasn't great and that he kind of picked up a bit of a freebie because Paul Townend maybe didn't go as hard as he could have on under so. I still think it was one hell of a performance. Yeah, it was a great performance from start to finish. Um, he jumped super, he's jumped probably the best he's jumped all year. And fair enough, Paul was never going to burst under so. Um, just so Deffy could breeze past him knowing that Deffy stays as well as he does so he's trying to get him beat and Deffy won despite of that and won very comfortably and uh, it's proved the gap between them from the Tingle Creek onto the Clarence House so Deffy for me I know they're talking about the Ryanair if it comes up good ground but I, I just run him in the champion chase now at this stage he's won all the big two races two more division races just go and smash him up again at Cheltenham It's mad how we've gone from um, very good champion hurdles to all of a sudden a very poor champion hurdle mm. and now a very good champion chase I mean if those first five or six in that market show up it's one hell of a race this year yeah it, it is very dependent on them though um, there's not a lot of depth there as we get on to later on but yeah definitely if you told me a couple of years ago you'd have a race where you'd have LTR two time champion up against a two time grade one two mile winner this year and then on the so add in uh, potentially a Plutard CLS Emery who is a potential and then obviously the, the unknown factor of Chacon Porsois um, it's it's it could be a melt water and crash on the Wednesday, one hundred percent. And finally, because again, it has been a bit of a damn squib the last few years. And and Paddy, it was one hell of a performance, Paddy, wasn't it? It really was. I mean, I, I just think it's a difficult one for Paul Townend to get right. Look, I know I know he knows the horse well, but I mean, I was reading on the the at the races, the guys were obviously going through the sectionals, and I mean, when they compared it to an earlier. Uh, race on the card there's no doubt that he just probably didn't play to um to his horse's strengths and you know i mean the thing is we know that Deffy Desai can quick and we've seen him do that in that forerunner race around um cheltenham uh, earlier in the season you know he, he he can quicken off you know a strong pace and he can definitely quicken off an average pace um so it was a disappointing sort of spectacle but nonetheless he definitely seems to be, you know, in a rich vein of form at the minute. And it's very, very hard to pick holes in Deffy Desai. Um, but I don't know, would you prefer him to see to stick at the minimum or the two and a half? At the moment, uh, Paddy, I just think he's won all the right races over two miles. Like before the season started, I definitely would have said to you uh, two and a half and, you know, he'd win the Ryanair. But the way he's going, it'd be very hard not to go now, Paddy, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would. I mean, the thing about this horse is, you know, he, he's got sort of, there's no chinks in his armour because, you know, even although Lost in Translation has gotten the better of him at Cheltenham before, he's come back and beat him over two and a half as well and beat him well, you know, and Lost in Translation is a horse who stays very well. But, you know, deffy has got that little turn of foot as well, which, you know, it's it's, it's a major um, tick in the box for this chap. And, you know, he's only seven year old. Um, you know, his form is rock, rock solid and, I mean, for me, I'd be happier to go down um, Green Mother at the minute because the two mile is really, really seeming to suit him just at the minute. Yeah, and the Ryanair will be there for him next season as well, of course. And while we're talking about the um, two mile division, back over hurdles, Paddy, um, Old Bally Andy got up to beat Pendant Hills. 
I can't envisage Bally Andy becoming a champion hurdle horse all of a sudden. I know it's a bad year, but what's going on with Penton Hills? Do you think he's good enough this year, Paddy, or is it just that he's another five-year-old maybe that kind of is still finding his feet? Yeah, I just think he's he's been guilty of, of the same thing both times, isn't he, where he's, he's just over-traveled a little bit. Look, we always knew this. Um, he was going to come on for Cheltenham because I probably cribbed him a little bit. And going back and watching the race a few times, he's actually ran pr- like pretty well at, at Cheltenham because the thing is, he actually didn't start to tie up on the last sort of 75 yards. And it's not like he's completely emptied out and hit a brick wall. He just got tired right on top of the line. Um, but obviously, we knew the other day he was going to be encountering pretty bad ground again. And I mean, even the difference between bad Cheltenham ground and bad Haydock ground, it's night and day. I mean, Haydock can be like an absolute swamp. Um, but to say he was only gubbed on the line, you can't really say he's done an awful lot wrong the other day. But for me, he's just doing too much under, under Nico throughout his races at the minute. And they just, whether if they can't even anchor or, or solve that problem, he's going to need better ground to, to see him see him over the line, if you know what I mean. Um, he, he was unlucky the other day, I have to say it. Obviously, look, he was only beaten by the by the, the, the minimum of verdicts. Um, but I don't think he is doing that much wrong as regards performance-wise. He's just wanting to get on with the job a little bit too much where you can't really crib him for, really. No, of course, Paddy. And like, he's the kind of horse, I'd imagine, too, that with a frantic pace, which you're basically guaranteed most of the time, in a champion hurdle, he'll um he should settle much better, Paddy. I think so. And do you know what Dorm I think about this horse is because he's been such a good jumper from day one, it's very difficult for a jockey to knock a swing out of him when he's been as keen as that because the obstacles don't get in his way. He's so quick on his feet, he's A to B, they don't take from the momentum at all that that maybe he, he is getting on the jockey throughout a race. So he he's a difficult ride simply because he's got that flat speed, he's got a bit of boost, but yeah, if they could just get the revs down ever so slightly but if I said, if not, he's going to need some some drier ground to to um, to just help him see the trip out. Yeah, absolutely. And and Dave, we had the champion hurdle chat last week. Of course, you said last week that Pentland Hills would have to win this race and win it well to be a champion hurdle contender. He's seven to one now. And I see an awful lot of people on social media are, are really cribbing this horse saying, you know, that he should be a much bigger price. What's your take on him now going forward? Because uh, Bally Andy, I think I'm being fair to say that he's maxed out there pretty much. Yeah, hasn't he? I think the fact that it's Bally Andy who's mugged him um, rather than say Joseph's horse, Durasso. Like Durasso had beaten him and shown his potential. You could say, okay, they're both two improving horses and they might go forward now to a champion hurdle. The fact he's been beaten by a 155 average hurdler um, and Bally Andy, who's nine year old now and not going to be improving or anything like that, that I would crib the form. Um, and it wouldn't be for me, like Pentland Hills, 7 1, you said, that's, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be going near no, that in a year or Yeah, no. So, um, but yeah. there is a situation where he wins the race. Like, of course, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect. I don't um, want to live in a world where that happens. I don't need <laughs> <laughs> uh, There was more talk after the, uh, the Grade 2 uh, Supreme trial on the same card about the Bedford hurdle than there was about the Supreme Novices hurdle which would uh, suggest the the level of the race uh, my nap last week Dave Stolen Silver got up to beat your nap Edward Stone so we were both involved in the running there was a reverse forecast there to be had somewhere yeah. but um, those horses going forward for me all it did was confirm that uh, Chantry House is one hell of a horse because he put a lot of these away quite easily yeah and that that's probably the main thing you take out of races that the horses that have been he's been beaten um, before so like Chantry House is definitely one to look forward to I think he'll be out in a couple of weeks uh, maybe on the bet for her the weekend there's a race there from um, but yeah no it was a good race it was a good race it was a good spectacle to watch Baron King Rebel obviously took them on um, and uh, the two lads came to get there on the line um, but like the form itself is probably nothing to write home about um, and as well like Haydock it took a lot of getting so you might say Stolen Silver is probably a bit more of a stair than, than the other two would going forward anyway if you wanted to take him out of the race but um good race but and good performance with a winner but well, I wouldn't be getting all mad about the form yeah he's the kind of horse Paddy isn't he a stolen silver who you could see winning a bet for a hurdle but then kind of finishing 6th or 7th in a supreme yeah that's it I think things just worked out very nicely from the other day because the second he's a little bit in the same boat I think Dermo as Penton Hills he does plenty I mean got even the last day when he won at entry I mean Tom Cannon he had an awful job to anchor him the whole way around. He's a very, very strong traveller. And 
I just think conditions that are day, he has gotten a little bit tired and he, he's given the twisting horse another chance to come and grab him on the line. I definitely think the best horse for me is as has finished second. Um, you know, and a good solid yardstick in third in the Banner King Rebel. He, you know, he was trying to give both the winner and the second weight. Um, you know, he's a, he, he's a very good horse, the Banner King Rebel, and there was very little between them at the line, really. But I think on the day, Edward Stone just tied up a little bit in such grueling conditions and stole and silver on the day. He's, pr- he's probably just nabbed a grade two simply because the, the winner is just gassed out having having over-travelled on, on pretty bad ground. And, uh, but Paddy, uh, Sam Twiston Davis is riding out of his skin at the moment, isn't he? He seems to be a jockey that's that's kind of plucking all these wins out of nowhere. He's he's riding as well as anyone in the UK and Ireland. Oh, there's no doubt. And, you know, I mean, I'm just glad that these big winners, obviously, he, he, he won the King George for, for his old boss. But, you know, the, these bigger winners that he's having recently have been for his dad. And it's great for the whole family, really, because, you know, they're a proper racing family. And you could never doubt Sam Twiston's ability. And I'm glad that he's bounced back so well, having sort of decided to go freelance and branch out on his own because he's a very uncomplicated rider. But when it comes down to the business end and you want a strong lad on your side, you know, there's no more active, strong jockey in the saddle at the minute than, than Sam Twiston. He's all action, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's, he's outstanding. And Paddy, just whilst we're obviously on horses like Edward Stone, etc., etc., that kind of won't won't settle, Goshen's a horse, Paddy, that I can't have for a moment for the triumph, just with his running style, etc. It's just, it seems like he'd, he'd nearly blow himself up at Cheltenham. What was your take on him at the weekend? I I was a good bit more impressed with him now the other day. Um, I thought he set off lovely. Um, you know, he wasn't getting taken on early doors, but the horse that uh, Leighton Road of Amanda Perrett's Minucci, you could see once they went past the stands, he was very keen and he's winged the, the first hurdle down the hill and he was away then. And I thought, to be fair, gushing. And I've got to agree with Gary Moore here because throughout the race, with, in company, he's he's jumped as straight as a gun barrel gushing. But, I mean, even by the time that they've turned, gone around Swindley Bottom um, and come along the side of the track there, there was nothing able to go with him. I mean, Minucci emptied out pretty quickly and he's ended up in front again, Goshen. And as soon as he's, he's in front, that's when this going to the right happens. And he goes in, he never has a cut at a hurdle when he's in front. He just runs right, pop, pop, pop. And visually, he, he's very, he's not really impressive. But in amongst horses the other day, I really couldn't fault him. And, I mean, he's not going to be five clear going to the second last um, at Cheltenham and, and, and running right at his hurdles. I think Gary Moore, who, you know, he's a fellow I really listen to because he doesn't just talk for the sake of it. Um, you've got to listen to him. And he isn't really that worried about going left-handed. Yeah, which is very interesting, Paddy. Whatever it is about that yard, they they really seem to be be fully stocked up with Mad Bastards all the time with the likes of Knocking the Nuts and, and him now as well. But he's, um, the likes of him and all... Alma- all mankind and um, Aspire Tower, Dave, they could prove problematic for for, for each other because the three of them seem to be very headstrong, front going sorts. That this could set it up for a real shock. It could, yeah, it could be a massive shock result. Um, something c- coming off the pace. Um, but we especially like this race could be ran quicker than the Champion Hurdle the way they're going on. Like um, Aspire Tower and um, All Mankind don't hang around either. And like Goshen. I, I I'm just I I I know he's won every, all his three hurdle races in style. Um and by double figure lengths, but I, I don't know what he's beaten really. And I at six to one, five to one for a triumph hurdle, I couldn't be having him anyway. Um, Gary Moore is not the biggest fan of Cheltenham either. In the, like he he doesn't buy into the whole festival being the be all and be all and end all. Yeah. So I I wouldn't be surprised if he found something softer for him at grade one level. Maybe he hold him off him for entry. Maybe kind of pretty softer touch. Um, but. Like it, it's shaping up to be a great triumph and um, there's some good horses in behind as well who we haven't even seen yet that are well touted um, there's one for William Mullins who looks like, like likely to make his debut in the spring juvenile hurdle at Dublin Race Festival last week next week um, who he's shown by Derek Han so um, I, I'm all in on Aspire Terror at the moment for me but I just think he's probably more flexible than the other two market yeah. leaders at least and the amount of times because even that year when Aspire Dallin was a strong favourite um, obviously Mr. Adjudicator and Fire Class were first and second in the spring hurdle out of nowhere really and then all of a sudden they were first and second in the triumph as well so of course there's Pen- plenty of water to go under the bridge just there yet Pennant yeah. Hills hadn't jumped the hurdle till February last year till so. February last year exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah um, so of course so that's Goshen and Dave will stick with you for the Irish accent here uh, 
we'll couple these together. Manella Indo and Monkfish were really, really impressed me the weekend. Yeah, like Manella Indo had to just go out and win his beginner's chase, um, and he did it and did it well. Um, probably a few people looking at the ones that finished behind him um, as eye catchers. <laughs> But uh, he was good. He jumped well and, and built on his initial run. And then Monkfish was very good. I thought um, he's a really good stayer, and uh, he, he's definitely gonna be a chaser. He's built like a chaser. So I think he does this year to use the old cliche as a bonus. But um, hopefully he he'll progress now and probably run the Albert Bartlett. Yeah, there was a few people in social um, suggesting that maybe Monkfish might be better served not going to the festival. It does seem like he is going for an Albert Bartlett, but, yeah, but I suppose when he, when he fit- runs his horses at Cheltenham, that's what he does. Like he yeah, if he's fit, he goes. You yeah. just run, really. Yeah, he, he doesn't like he doesn't like to go easy on them and doesn't like to kind of mind them a little bit too much. Let let them race and let them learn how to race. And probably detriment to him in, from previous horses not making yeah. their most over their chase careers, but. That's, that, that's how he does things and who are we to argue with who are we to argue with Willie Mullins yeah. <laughs> and um, and Paddy the, the RSA Chase now is starting to look like a really good division Paddy with obviously Champ Battle Over Die and, and now Manila Indo yeah Manila Indo I think he just got a little bit lazy going to the last of the day at Navin um, and you know the, the, the runner up just gave him a little bit of a scare uh, for, for a minute that was all but I thought on the whole he'd done his usual thing you know he's a fine big strapping horse and travels and fence as well and oh, I thought it was a very very good effort and I think he's going to come on again even for that um, so but I just like the way he goes through his races you know I mean he, he's, he's a lovely great big fine horse and he does everything right and I, I think that will leave him absolutely spot on he jumped around a big track now in Navin and got the job done quite nicely and um, you know th- thank God he's trained on and, and, and looks progressive from last year's festival yes of course but uh, because he he did a busy old spring as well last year so it is great that he's bounced back like he has so yeah so that's the review of the week all done and dusted and we'll just go for a, a quick commercial break You're listening to the Race Hour podcast, brought to you by bookmakers.co.uk. Check out bookmakers.co.uk each and every day for tips, news and the best odds for horse racing. Looking for a new bookmaker and the best sign-up offers in the industry? You'll find that at bookmakers.co.uk, sponsors of the Race Hour. Hello and welcome back to the Race Hour podcast in association with bookmakers at Dakota.uk. Um, we'll now move on to, of course, the preview of this weekend's action, which is absolutely jam-packed full of top quality racing at Cheltenham and Doncaster on Saturday and ample more racing across the weekend. We'll start with Cheltenham, which is the uh, festival trials uh, day, of course. And the 150, Dave, is the... Um, is the Paddy Power 45 Sleeps the Cheltenham Trophy Handicap Chase what a name for a race they love the name <laughs> Lawler is your 7-1 to favourite who's your fancy here yeah I'm not going to go much past uh, Lawler here I think um, based on his run the last day um, in the Paddy Power Handicap Chase behind St. Cavalos and Old Grangewood um, he'll take all the beating here and 7-1 to one, I think it's a very fair price um, like he it's only a couple of pounds. He got raised four pounds for that run. I don't think it's going to stop him. And I think it's probably a bit of a softer race than the last day as well. So Lawler seven to one. Aidan Collins still riding well. He's been riding well all for the last two years, really. So I think he's a great chance around seven to one. Perfect. Um, and Paddy. Yeah, he's got a real good course record, hasn't he? Uh, I mean, that was a massive run the last day and the first time. Cheap pieces behind um, Old Grangewood. You know who is developing into a fair horse or Grangewood he certainly is a horse who's on the improve and he had every chance and it's just his course record it's very very good isn't it uh, obviously Dickie Johnson has been on board the bulk of the time but you know even when you go back to November 2018 that form with Dynamite Dollars when he beat him by seven lengths I mean that's massively good form and he absolutely smashed him that day although he did turn around the form at Sandown the next day but very very capable horse the only thing that would worry me is He's just not won since then, um, since that race, November 18. But like I said, he, although finishing third the last day, very, very fine margins. He was only beating short head and he certainly wouldn't be winning out of turn, Dermo. No, definitely not, Paddy. And he's the kind of horse now that, that there really would be a very welcome winner all around the course for the Kayleigh Woolacott stable. So that is uh, that's Lawler for Dave. That is Lawler for Paddy Aspel at 7-1. to one. I quite fancy two taffs here. Um, at 11 to 1 there's another horse who's been waiting a while for a win but it all happened a bit too quickly last time in the old Hennessy 
Um, he, he always runs well from a break. He's often one who ran very well here at Cheltenham. He gets weight all around the place. He, he runs off 11-1 here. And, of course, he was third in the Cheltenham Festival behind Tully East in a novice's handicap chase. Um, this really, really does look a wide open race to me and I think uh, two taps has every chance and one message true from our usual host who will be back next week Mr Dean Ryan is that he is napping uh, Gardel of Victoire on this and Dave he's a very loyal punter isn't he he is that's probably Dean's one flaw is that he's too loyal he's too loyal um, <laughs> although saying that Gardel of Victoire did run well the last time uh, when finishing six just made a couple of mistakes and to yeah. knock it back but I can see where he's going, but it's loyalty. That thing, it's kills thing. <laughs> so, yeah, so look, we'll move on now. And we'll forget all about loyalty now, obviously. And we're here now for the Albert Bartlett trial at um, at Doncaster, which is at five past two. Uh, boss man Fred, today, uh, Dave, is your three to one favourite. Who do you fancy here? Yeah, boss man Fred's in- interesting. He hasn't really probably beaten much, and it's only rated 134, but has won over course and distance, and th- th- that's what you need in these three mile trials. And novice races that he's, you need to stay. Um, Champagne Well has gone back to his um, 2019 form, 2018 form by getting beaten all the time. Um, when favourite, um, it's not a quip. The horse he's very honest in game. He just always finds one too good. I think the one I'd probably fancy here is uh, Thomas McDonough. I can't really see him running anywhere else, and I would reckon he'll go off in front as usual and be hard to stop. And if the ground gets soft as well, it'll play to play to his advantage. And he's a horse in form, and James Snowden's flying. Absolutely fantastic. And um and Paddy? Yeah, Bossman Freddy's unbeaten, isn't he? But I think Dave is absolutely spot on. Believe it or not, I mean, all his three wins have produced very little from all three races, to be honest. Um but nonetheless, he is unbeaten. His point of point has probably worked out better than any of his harder <laughs> runs, to be honest. Um but you know, obviously He's a son of Dubai destination. He does look pretty high class, but you know, even the handicapper, he hasn't overreacted. A mark of one, three, four, I think you wouldn't like to see him much higher because on what he has achieved, it hasn't amounted to a great deal. Um, the other horse I thought who has a bit to do with the weights here, but I do like him, um, is Amy Murphy's horse, Mercy and Knight. I think he's a horse who has gone under the radar a little bit. A good effort here over course and distance last time and although they are chucking him in at the deep end it wouldn't surprise me if he was to outrun his mark at 120 absolutely fantastic Paddy that's a, that's a big old price too at um, a 20 to 1 so it's Mercy and Knight at 20 to 1 for Paddy it is uh, Thomas McDonough 11 to 2 for Mr David Weldon and I quite like actually that horse Dave that you mentioned Champagne Well who keeps bumping into them but it's not like he's bumped into any sorts of horses you know he's bumped into Time Hill he's bumped it, into Redford Road last time I think either of those horses would would win this race particularly Time Hill obviously now he is entered up at Cheltenham as well but I think this is an easier race than the one that he could potentially face at Cheltenham so Fergal O'Brien's having one hell of a season and um, this horse Champagne Well can make it even better than that now of course the 225 Dave I can't wait to see the um, the future Cheltenham Gold <laughs> Cup winner uh, we actually, are we actually going to see him are we? <laughs> in the Paddy Power Cotswolds Chase Santini 7-4 which is short enough to be fair considering the race that it is also considering the fact that arguably if this horse was to run well in second considering this is only his 10th ever start you know there's a lot of improvement still left in this horse he only had two runs before that RSA last year um, so there is plenty of improvement there in him 7-4 to four is probably short enough not that I I won't be taking him on definitely not because I absolutely adore him but there's definitely a reason to take him on isn't there yeah, like, like, just the whole like it, freshness thing and having the runs and the break and not really know what's going on behind closed doors. Um, like, but an all-known form, he should win. Bristol to my, while he's good, he probably doesn't act as well around Cheltenham as he does Haydock, so he's probably vulnerable um, in that sense of the word. Although he could be off, this could be his Gold Cup, really, because he's not going to be he's gonna be nine, not good enough, probably in, in March. Dead the work's probably not going to run. Top Phil Ben... It's probably not good enough. The Rash Counter won the Labbrook the last time. You'd like to see him progress. Slade House has had an ideal season this year. He's been well handicapped and he's also still had his novice um, status from last year for Chase. And so he's been able to pick up a few races. Um, Alfred Azobo will probably run here because I can't really see where else they're going to run. And he's looking for a couple of pounds off for the for the Grand National. And then Mr. Whitaker and X-Page. You'd imagine they'll run in the handicap um, or handicap chase over the weekend. 
So it could be a small field. I don't know whether that really suits Santini because he'll have it might be a, a he likes to be buried a bit. He likes to be buried a bit and have a, a pace to run off and just stay and stay and stay. He won't like to have to quicken. So I'd, I'd take a chance on either the Rasher counter and stay house, probably on the day without uh, Santini. Um, and if I got a couple of nice each way on that, I'd, I'd have a go with the, both of them uh, just to cover the stakes on Santini win. Yeah, you're kind of swaying like I am as a no bet race, really. Yeah. I, like I just hope Santini can can back up the money that I've invested for him for the Gold Cup. And Paddy, who do you fancy here? I think did Colin Tizard say earlier in the week the Slate House isn't going to run? Okay. Yeah, he said something along those lines, didn't he? Because I think they're going to yeah. keep in the novice company, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I, I'm in the same camp as you, to be honest, Dermot Santini. It's just a pity we haven't seen so much of him. It's amazing to think he's, he's just turned eight and. You know, he's not even into double figures as regards runs yet. But, um, I mean, the thing about the Sandown race, I was struggling to make head or tail of it because there was only four runners. There was, like, fences omitted. But he got into a fair duel with now McGinty from a good way down. And, I mean, he, he only ended up beating him by a head. But, I mean, now McGinty got absolutely stuffed in the, in the Welsh National next time. But, I mean, if you go back to that run in the RSA last year, I mean... To run top of the game, who I thought got probably one of the rides of the festival um, in the RSA that day, he ran at the half a length. I mean, he holds Delta work on that run, doesn't he? Um, he was he was third, um, Delta work. But I don't know. It, it, it's difficult. He's high, high class. Delta work is actually rated six pound more than what Santini's one six nine, one six three, but. I do love this horse. I think he's very, very high class and please God, he turns up. But this is a very, very warm race. I mean, even the horse at the top, although people will always crib him because he's not won at Cheltenham, in his four runs, he's been in the money three times, Bristol de May. And I mean, that was a massive run to run loss and translation to a length and a half in um, that big race at Haydock last time. So it's, it's wide open, to be honest. But I do hope Santini turns up and, you know, he's course record he's never been out of the money himself and but just that rsa form last year for me is outstanding yeah paddy because a lot of people knocked it very quickly when when delta work came out and kind of flopped early and then when santini did but obviously delta work has backed that up now and and santini yeah. as well as that before that race last year he missed he missed the week before it because of the the foot ulcer he had That's so right. like yeah. the run that he actually produced that day on only his third start over fences was a phenomenal effort and um like he is the one i think in the gold cup division as i've said before he's the one in that division that can continue to really improve and the uh the sky is definitely the limit for him but again so so we kind of haven't landed on much there myself and paddy like santini but probably won't be backing him and you'll be taking them on with the rasher counter maybe on the day depending yeah, the on the rasher counter but just back to that sand down run paddy if you take now we get the out of it. Um, Santini's thirty lengths clear of Talk is cheap, who was rated one five seven over fences. Like if you like, that's a massive performance. Like now McGinty probably ran out of skin on the day, and uh, Santini probably needed it a bit more. And it's it's just a lazy type. Like, but they pulled miles clear to third. Like, so I I think Santini is probably like most likely winner here, and would probably likely go close to favoritism for the Gold Cup if after, that's the angle he wants to take it. Yeah. Um, in the play in the Gold Cup market, not a little bit maybe if he was to, to win here, he'd go, probably go close to favour. Yeah, it's this race and the Irish Gold Cup that are going to really uh, make that market. Uh, but yeah, okay, perfect. And then moving on then to the two forty at Doncaster. Speaking of, uh, we're trying to speak of Santini as a future legend, but we have a current legend running here, Paddy, in Lady Buttons. Uh, she's a hard mare to take on, Paddy, isn't she? Yeah, she really is, and. You know, you've really got to admire Dermo the way she sort of alternates between um, hurdles and fences. You know, they both come alike to her and she's obviously got a real love for Doncaster. I mean, she's only been beaten there once uh, from five starts. And although got an absolute peach of a ride off, off Tommy Dowson over fences here last time. This is a big ask because, you know, she's going to try and give way to Floressa, who is going to try and give her four pound. Lady Buttons has just turned ten. Floressa is five. And I mean, Floresca has got some lovely, lovely form in the book. Um, really has the other mayor here, um, who although is only a year younger than Lady Buttons, Irish Row, another mayor who's only been out of the money in one of her six starts at Doncaster. And I just think 
they tried her over a fence the last day at Musselburgh, and although Musselburgh are, are a pretty handy fence, she didn't really enjoy it, but I think it was worth a shot because they're sort of hitting the crossbar so much over hurdles now, and she's not over big. She's always got plenty of weight. I thought it was worth a shot, but sensibly they've gone back over the smaller obstacles, and she absolutely loves Donny, but, you know, whether she's going to get her day in the sun here, I don't know. I just think that Lady Buttons at 10 year old is going to need another career best to get the, the, the better of Floressa here, who looks very progressive, low mileage. And I think she's a very, very good mare. I hope Lady Buttons wins, but Floressa for me, she's half her years, a lot less miles on, on, on them legs. Um, This is a big ask, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely Paddy. And, but she'd bring down the house, Dave, wouldn't she, if she was good enough? If she was, yeah, I don't think she will. I think Floresa will will uh, be better than her here. Um, as Paddy was saying, younger legs and five age on her side. Like she should be unbeaten over her hurdles. Uh, the race she lost the silver forever. She was badly hampered. Um, I'm surprised it actually wasn't overturned, given the steward and we've seen lately. But um, fifteen to eight, I think she's she's the bet in the race here. Lady Buttons is admirable, admirable and all that, but um, I can just see Floresa getting the better, especially Doncaster with the long straight. I think it'll suit Floresa, Floresa more. <laughs> the tongue twister. As you know, Dave, it's uh, three mile handicap hurdles and uh, mayor's races I tend to avoid. So yeah. I'm happy to follow you lads in there with a bit of a podcast charge there on, on Floresa in the 240 at Doncaster. And then at the three o'clock, there's a Ballymore uh, novices hurdle trial. Uh, Sporting John is your seven to four favourite. The one I found really interesting here, if he does run, is King Roland, Dave, who obviously was an absolute superstar in bumpers last season. What's your thoughts on the race? Yeah, it, it's a cracking race. Um, I, the skeletons are probably be kicking themselves now that they got that uh, race overturned with uh, Imperial <laughs> Allure because they got the five-pound penalty now, which is going to be very hard to give away, I think, to some of these. be interested to see if Harry Senior shows up after his mishap the last day to cause him to be an on-runner. Um, but, like, Sporting John's rated 146, King Roland's 133. That's probably going to be adjusted now after his extra win last time because he was very good that day. He, I think he broke the track record and everything. Um, and I, I'd be following in him, him, him in here to progress further um, and, and beat Sporting John with Protect Rat to follow them home. So 11 to 4, 3 to 1 is a lovely price. It is, it is. I can see there's some, some 4 to 1 around the place as well. It's um, It does... Uh, no, that's actually gone now. Sorry. I can see that there's a 3 to 1 around the place, Dave. And... Um, and Paddy, what's your thoughts on the race? Yeah, very, very competitive. Um, I thought that was the right decision when the skeleton said that they were going to appeal um, the Cheltenham race. And I was pleased to see them get it back because I did think the best horse won on the day. Um, do you know what Harry Skelton picking up the four-day ban? Was that still upheld? I don't know, actually, um, Paddy. I doubt it. Because, I mean... Even I thought the, to get four days for what he did because we like we see this happening, especially in Ireland, every day of the week. You know what they're like. I mean, <laughs> they, they'll all they, they'll always not take each take another jockey's ground, but you know if, if you're just about clear, you go in front straight away to make them sort of say, "Well, look, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to come round me now and go past me." Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's a, all I thought it was a case of the day Harry Skelton done that. It was a case of he was just about in front of him. He's gone across to think, well, if you want to come and beat me, you've got to come round and go past me. And, I mean, the thing is, we know Champagne Well is a real stare, and he really finds for pressure Champagne Well. Or, no, sorry, not Champagne Well. It was the, the other horse, Fergal Brines. Um, he's in opposition here on, on Saturday. But he's a real grinder and a real finder so he was never going to lie down uh, but I was glad the result was turned around he, he because to be fair the horse of Skelton's he, he really deserved his day in the sun and he showed that he acts around Cheltenham and I think he's pretty high class this um, this horse of Skelton's he's only five year old very progressive he is going to have to give way to the whole field here but I really like this chap absolutely perfect Paddy so that's uh, six to one shot protector at for uh Paddy Aspel and then myself and Dave are very happy to row in behind the uh, the pure potential of King Rowland, who um who was second first time out this season to Sunikonos and uh, should only improve after that because that trip was far too short and last time at Exeter this horse was phenomenally good so he should continue to improve and Harry Fry's horses continue to kind of to improve as well because he had a very difficult start to the season form wise. Move on then to the big race of the day at Doncaster. This is the Skybet Handicap Chase. It's over three miles, but it will feel like it's it's five miles by the end of it. Um, 
Your six to one favorite is Lamy Surge. Your second favorite there is Dingo Dollar. This is one hell of a race, Dave. Uh, unbelievably tough. And who we landed on? Yeah, it's, it's usually a good race. Well, it's usually a good race to watch. To go, they don't take any prisoners, and they go have a letter at it. Um, the one I kind of like is Burbank. Um, for Nicky Henderson, like I couldn't be having Lamy Surge. Like I know people like the horse and all that, and he's a good horse on his day, but like the way he ran behind the world's end the last day, he just would drive you absolutely bananas. Um, if you're following him because he's just such a dodge pot once he hits the front um, Dingo Dollar is a good horse and he's won course in distance before you ran well in the Labrook previously which is usually a good race to follow you see he's a bit of money around for him um, but Burbank the, the last day you know he was lucky enough because um, the other Nicky Henderson horse Morning Vicar fell in the race when he was travelling well four, oh, that was four out though so he was still fine um, he still had a lot to do where Burbank kind of led and made a mistake and got reminders but I just like the way he kind of went back through the race and sent to re-rally and take the lead and then he went nine lines clear of a good yard stick and title flow um, so I, th- I think up three miles for him now as well seven year old progressive um, I, he probably needs to win as well to, or at least get a bump to get into the national he's on with Trevor Hemmings which is probably going to be his aim the nationals towards the end of the year so Burbank for Nicky Henderson to win the Skybet Skybet absolutely perfect Um, I actually like two against the field here uh, first of all the I think Moonbeg River was he's 11 he hasn't ran all that much he's um, he's 33 to 1 here but he was second to Go Conquer last year who I think is a very good horse um, over this trip and he was second off 123 he'll he'll line up on Saturday off 128 um, this horse seems like he's been held back a small but for this one again that slog he'll love it so Moonbeg River was he is old now obviously he's 11 years old but at 33 to 1 he's um he's far too big a price there and he's already jocked up with with Sean Quinlan on his back and as well as that I thought with the the form of the Sue Smith yard the Raven Hill Road was a, a bit of a big price at 14 to 1 um has chased home the likes of Goodbye Bobby this year who I think is a very smart horse and after that then was a very good winner last time at Kelso and he just seemed to get better as the as he was going further and further so he's definitely another horse at big all odds who could just keep going and Sue Smith's horses as we know won't be stopping at the end of the a nutritional test uh, and Paddy who do you fancy here? Yeah we've got plenty of horses that they certainly know the way around Donny here plenty of previous course winners and Raven Hall, Raven Hill Road she's got a lovely race and we had 10-7 Dermot you'd have to respect him because you know the yards horses now are really running much much better um, but god there was a few in here I liked I thought this is a race Alan King has done well in sort of the last 10 years or so. I thought Azerti would have a little squeak. He has got to bounce back to form, but he's jocked up. Adrian Heskin is down to ride him. 10 stone 11. You know, he's only eight year old. Um, you know, you could say he, he's still mildly progressive over fences. He's only had the 10 starts, three wins. So I would give him a little go in a race, which as I say, Alan King does pretty well in. And the other one I liked was, although she just turned 10 year old now, my old gold is very, very consistent mare. She's got a reasonably good strike rate over fences, 50%, to be honest. Um, but she has only had the six starts. So she typical of one of Nikki Richards, six starts over fences, should I say. But typical of one of Nikki, she is low mileage, but certainly looks progressive and is a previous course and distance winner. So I'd have a couple in there. My old gold and then a trainer who does very well in Alan King in Azerty. Azerty, absolutely perfect. Uh Paddy, and we'll stick with you now, Paddy, a horse that you have always had the highest um, highest acclaim for over the last two seasons, and that that's Paisley Park. If the cat fits, is obviously interesting in taking him on in that 335 uh, cleave hurdle at Cheltenham, but you'd have to think that Paisley Park is going to be very hard to beat again, Paddy. Yeah, I think, you know, visually his most impressive way he went through the race was was last time at Newbury because it's the first time Dermo I didn't see him run around and idle and it's the first time he's actually jumped the last hurdle nicely um, which just makes me think that mentally he's come forward a little bit he's just so high class you know he, he is doing everything or he's, he's doing most of his things throughout a race in, in fourth gear when other horses around him are flat out he's just very very high class if the cap fits of Harry Fry's He's the sort of horse 
I definitely think finally they put some headgear on him, uh, and eventually I think he, he is going to need a blinker. But for now, the cheap pieces are doing the doing the job because even since they've gone gone on, I mean, he only beat Roxana by a head at entry last year at the festival, but he absolutely kicked the last out of the ground. And fair play, he managed to get back up on the line. And then um, last time at Ascot, he beat Call Me Lord by half a length. But I thought that was a good effort. You know, he grounded out, but he isn't a horse which really shows his hand much. So it's hard really to gauge him. But I think in time, when they reach for a blinker, which I'm convinced they are going to have to, this horse could really, really even go forward again. But for now, very, very difficult to be against my old mate, um, Paisley Park. Paisley Park, yeah, no, I completely agree with Paddy. And, uh, and Dave? Paisley Park, yeah, there's actually just probably an argument that four to six is, is value here. I think yeah. You can probably go off one to three, one to four on the day. So, um, yeah, Paisley Park for me. Definitely. And the one thing, though, to note with that stairs division this year is that it, it does, does it feel like a bit of a warmer division than it did last year? I think it always does this time of year. And then, and then it just falls apart, yeah, as, as always. So, fair enough, um, fair enough. Yeah. So, of course, so that's all, all the ITV racing absolutely covered. Uh, just a few more notes for the weekend there is the uh, Solarina hurdle at um, at Ferry House this is a very good gauge for the Mayor's Novices hurdle uh, Dalzita is the Mayor that I'm really interested in um, in this division and she goes for this she goes for the exact same race as Lorena has before so she's from the same connection same owner so of course why wouldn't you go that the well-worn path but if she wins this she'd be a lot shorter than the Five to one that is around her for the the mayor's novice hurdle. She has looked very smart so far, and Alaho looks like he could make his reappearance on um, on Sunday as well. So it's uh, it looks a very very good weekend. So so Dave, if you have anything else, and then what's your nap? Uh, nothing else for me for the weekend. Um, it's kind of just watching between now and chat and just keep an eye out for stuff. Um, a view to. It waiting for non run up out across the board and having a few punts there. <laughs> um, I, my nap is going to be... I don't want to steal your nap again, Darren, or doing the same race because you just hit me on the line again. Um, I'm going to go with Laylor in the, in the handicap in the 150 at Cheltenham at 7-1. 7-1. to, one. Seven to one. Absolutely perfect. And, um, and Paddy? Well, just regards anything else, Dermo, there was one at Fairy House. I know it's, it's, it's much further down the scale but there was an opportunity hurdle is the last race at Fairy House on Saturday and it was a horse there I seen win last time called My Old Gold uh, or a mare should I say of James Nash's now he's put her straight into uh, a handicap after winning last time with 11 stone 5 and stepped her up to 3 mile um, I think this could be a real good bit of training because she, she really looks progressive My Old Gold and you might just get a little bit of a price about her because um, although she's a previous course winner because she lacks a bit, a bit of experience, you might just get a little price. So that was in the last at Fairy House on Saturday. And then as far as naps go, although I don't want to see her beaten in the mayor's race, and I hope she could defend her crown, Lady Buttons, I'm going to go with the the Henderson mayor, Floressa. I just think the much younger legs are going to count uh, for a lot on the day. So 4C, I think, you know, they're quite close in the betting, and so they should be. Um, and it'll be a big ask for her even to get the better of the old mare but I do just think that uh, younger legs could win the day could win the day that's absolutely perfect Paddy and my nap then will be Ravenhill Road in the uh, Skybet Chase at Doncaster so that's all of the weekend uh, previewed we'll now move on to our Cheltenham Festival special anti-post obviously as well we'll move on that just after a quick commercial break don't delay. Head over to bookmakers.co.uk today. Hello and welcome back to the Race Hour podcast. I am your host, Dermot Nolan, in absence, unfortunately, of uh, of Dean Ryan, who has um, is showing his age and he's uh, he's pulled his back, unfortunately, gardening. So we are now uh, going to move on now to the Shellen Festival Antipo Special. This week we will take a look at the Champion Chase and the Ryanair Chase because again they are kind of intrinsically linked with who runs where we've already kind of discussed this uh but dave in just just one quick sentence the ground is good to soft ryanair or champion chase for defi desai i think they'll end up going ryanair but personally i would love to see them go champion chase champion chase and paddy yeah i'd be going champion chase route um i just think everything is clicking quite nicely at the minute um he's having a great season and I just thought, like you said, that option can be always there. He's only seven year old. That option can be there next year. So for me, I'd be sticking to the minimum for now. 
absolutely perfect um so dave uh looking at the odds uh, this looks like an absolutely cracking field I, I can't get over how strong this field could well be champion chase who's your bet um at the moment it, it, it'd be Deffy. um i can't i can't see him being beaten if he lines up two to one is, is more than fair Um, hopefully people are on a, a bigger price than that because he, he's kind of been it's always been thought of that he will eventually just step up and trip and go the Ryanair route so his price has been slow to contract um, and he's only just gone favourite after the weekend so yeah 2-1 to one for Deffy for me and then I'd have a saver on uh, Celius Emery um, with a view to him probably hacking up in the Dublin Racing Festival um, the Dublin Chase beating Shaq on Porsche and he's about 10-1 to one at the moment so if he wins or goes second on that um, all roads will lead to um, Cheltenham but I, I would just say that he's been a horse that has shown form and then had injuries and stuff like that because he, he is very lightly racing has been hard to train for an eight year old so I, I'd be looking for non running a bit on, on CLS Emery CLS Emery still kind of pisses me off because my thought is always how far would he have won that Arkle by yeah. last year you know yeah. and he, he'd hammered uh, all those horses basically in yeah. the uh, Agoran Park uh, so Paddy there's a gun put to your head Paddy uh, who's your bet for the champion chase uh, very hard to be against Deffy who just really knows his way around there um, and like I said that turn of foot can get any jockey out of trouble um, and he's used that to affect more than once this season but it's a red red hot race but I say he's he's having a serious season very difficult to be against him massively good course record and I say he knows every blade of grass around there now to say he's only seven and I think he'll be on the scene for a good while yet yeah absolutely I'm kind of got a different tack I think just the way the check and Persuade put Deffy Desai away last year at Punchestown, that that question obviously still isn't answered because Deffy had taken in Cheltenham whilst uh, check and Persuade was relatively fresh. But the way that check and did it that day, um, I'm completely willing to forgive Christmas. He he's, he won't be the first or last of the William Mullins horses who's flopped in that race. Where Min was beaten by simply Ned before in that race, so I completely forgive him. But Dave is bang on the money. Whoever emerges victorious in that Dublin chase, I think will take an absolute chunk out of this market. The one horse, lads, that we haven't mentioned, uh, surprisingly enough, is Altior. Um, arguably, Altior is a big price now. He, he is, but like, if you put, say put Deffy in the race last year, I think Deffy would have beaten Altior. Altior goes, he doesn't really quicken, like Dean would say he goes into turbo mode after the last and pulls away. But he kind of just stays on just a little bit faster. I think Deffy is a better turn of foot and Deffy would go past Altior. Um, and to add to that, they've been training Altior. Uh, I don't know, Paddy probably had to tell you more about how they train, if they train a horse to step up and trip going forward. But um, he only ran once over two and a half miles and he was kind of, his heart looked a bit broken by surname that day. The two um, of them killed each other. Yeah. Because like, they haven't come out since but property. Surname, surname came out in, the, in King George, George and was ran terrible. Well yeah, yeah. Um, and has had a good record around Kempton as well and we haven't seen Altior and the whole Ferrari we've shrunk it into with uni betting or whatever <laughs> we've done, done that enough um, so I, I need to see Altior run I need to see him progress, not progress but to at least show some level of form um, going into a champion chase especially a hot champion chase like this like he's not going to get like last year he beat Plitalog and so Royal by a couple of lengths um, and we he's were, not the kind of horse of course he's not the kind of horse that's, that, that's uh, going to be able to do this and this kind of race like you know um, so I'd be very worried that Altior might even place in a race as hot as this um, yeah yeah I, I'd see I still think that he still carries in even from beating Min that year um, I still think he's carrying in the strongest piece of form into this race I love Deffy Desai but Deffy Desai Paddy has beaten on a 12 year old on the sow now over two miles and as you watch that day and at the races they really were very critical of the pace in that race as well so there is a fear here Paddy uh, for backers of Deffy Desai that Altior is really being overlooked isn't he uh, I don't honestly know I mean because we've had all this nonsense about you know he's, he's, he's missed other engagements about uh, other bits and pieces of problems I think he had such a hard race against surname that day um, you know we mentioned it before Nico got down off him straight away the horse was physically exhausted now I know they've they've never really cribbed about that, but it's it's been you know that issue with his withers and whatnot about missing other races. But he had a very very hard race. You just wouldn't know if he's ever going to come back the same horse again because sometimes horses can have their hearts broken. Um, you know, sort of 
mentally uh, more so than anything and and then it can lead to to you know physically they're maybe just not as good as what they were so I, i'd have to be convinced and 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 therefore if you were going to back them i think you'd have to have a bit of value on your side there you know for me anyway yeah no Paddy, that's that's absolutely more than fair and the last question then lads on the champion chase is there anything at big odds dave that that would catch your attention at all not really no I, I was looking at, through it last night and most of the ones at big odds are either not going to run or have already been beaten by the ones at the top of the market and like I, there's no reason for the form to be reversed um, the one you could probably make a case for is maybe Duvan um, on a back class kind of factor but he's going to be going in there fresh and is fragile as well um, the rest of them I, I'd struggle to make cases for yeah no that that is fair and possibly we're just being a bit greedy because if yeah. the uh, if the first five or six you turn up for that man how many more do you want <laughs> if the first five or six turn up for that market there lads we're looking at one of the best champion chases of all time and then a race uh, Paddy that's kind of intrinsically linked with it is the Ryanair because you might have a few horses maybe scared of the top three that might go here um, A Potard is the favourite but that obviously will be linked in with a non-runner no bet basis um, and then Min who is my idea of an absolute whopping bet at six to one, I think Min is just absolutely born for this race. So, Paddy, who would you fancy in the Ryanair? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it, these races are sort of going to sort each other out, aren't they? As, as to who goes where and, and and who's going to get scared off of the of the um, of the Queen Mother. But Min, I mean, look, he's nine year old now, but he looks as good as ever, doesn't he? You really couldn't crib him one bit, and um he, he is value he's around about four to one there was he he's four to one now running no bet paddy and then he's six to one elsewhere yeah no he certainly couldn't knock that that's for sure um you know great bit of training with willie mullins to keep the wheels on this chap and and like i say have him looking ability wise as good as ever at nine year old um he's had a pretty good year so far uh how about aptly tired which way do you think he's going to go Applatard, I think with the history Henry de Bromhead has in the race, I think he 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 loves the the champion chase. Now he has won the Ryanair mm-hmm. as well, but back with the flow, obviously. So I don't think these people are stupid either. I think the uh, the owners will just want to win. Um, again, we spoke about this with Envy Allen before. Uh, these owners haven't haven't tasted victory bar in that champion bumper at the Cheltenham Festival I don't believe so um, he could end up here but I just think with the way that he's been running all season if he was to run well in that Dublin chase again over two miles and if he was even hauled off Jack and Persuade again you, you kind of couldn't see him come here then Paddy could you? Yeah no I agree I mean he has been well backed doesn't he but just be interesting to see which route to go but yeah this is red hot I mean even all for all, what we say all for all on I mean he's he's, he's only eight year old, but right back to his best the last day at Kempton when you know they've apparently sorted out some very very serious ulcer issues he had. So I mean, because prior to that he'd been very underwhelming in both his runs, but he'd obviously been suffering quite badly. But although getting an excellent ride off off Brian the other day, I thought he looked right back to his tough front running best. But um, yeah, a cracking contest for sure. Absolutely perfect. And um, and Dave. Yeah, it's 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 really competitive. Like, there's a lot more depth in this. Like, you have the top five in the Queen Mother, but there's a lot more depth in this. Like, you go down to the likes of Kalashnikov, who is a good horse and acts around Cheltenham. We've seen that in the past. Um, and he's twenty five to one. Um, you've Balco the Flow, former winner. Now he's probably gone at the game. Is thirty three to one. And Comedium, who won a massive entry hurdle, ma- sorry, entry handicap last year, um, and ran reasonably well in a two mile, um, race over Christmas behind um Aplutard. He's thirty three to one. Um so there's a lot of depth in it. Like the one I like at an each way price. I, I don't know if you're gonna run the race and he have questions to answer after his run at Cheltenham last year is Real Steel. Um he won really well beating Footpad on um on Sunday at Turles. And now the only like he finished sixth last year in the in the JLT behind Effie, which is a really hot race. But he didn't really jump well around Cheltenham. So that's that's the only fear I have with him. And there's talk of maybe skipping and going straight to Punchstown and maybe trying to pick up a, a softer Punchstown Gold Cup. Um, but at 16 to 1, he'd be for me. Um, I have backed that Plutard previously, but I think, as you say, they're probably more likely to go the two mile route now um, with him. And he is a former winner over two mile five, so hopefully, maybe they will at the festival. Sorry, hopefully, they will step forward to that. And main, I think, is rock solid. Rider of the Storm is fairly solid as well. It's, it's a really good it's race. It's a really good race. Yeah, and hopefully they all line up and um, we'll see uh, uh, see them all kind of run the race and, and whatever. It won't be any hard luck stories. 
So going to your head, a platter turns up easier betting the race. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. So in the champion chase, it was Deffy for uh, for David Weldon and Paddy Aspel. Um, I fancy clearly a Rich Richie double in both because I fancy Chakin Persuas and Min and Paddy Aspel fancied Min as well for Ryanair Glory. And then it was a platter. And if you had to pick one of them each way, Dave, who would you be going for? A real steal for me. Real steal, yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's just going left-handed for him. Obviously, it doesn't seem to be. A possibility the only one each way that I would add into that is the uh, 33 to 1 shot Azo who's been placed uh, in the last two years of the Ryanair this does look a lot stronger but he will be held back for this he seems to really peak in this race he's chased home on the so and throwed on last year who he gave a real fright to so Azo he is 10 years old but he's been looked after very well by the absolutely peerless Venetia Williams so at um, a 33 to 1 I can't quite figure out that price but there we are. So, gentlemen, thanks very much for another edition of the Race Hour podcast in association with Bookmakers Dakota UK. We all wish uh, Mr. Dean Ryan the best of luck in his recovery, and hopefully, we'll see him next week. You've been listening to the Race Hour, brought to you by Bookmakers Dakota UK, your best bet for tips, news, and bookmaker reviews. 